Hi, my name is Julia Silly, and I'm a data scientist and software engineer at our studio. And today, in this screencast, we're going to use this week's Tidy Tuesday data set on episodes of Doctor Who, the television show, the beloved television show, and we're going to predict the viewership for each episode based on the date that it is aired. This is gonna give us the opportunity to talk about feature engineering for dates, and we're gonna use bootstrap resampling to look at the results, and so this is gonna let us talk about workflows and how to really flexibly um, get out any kind of information that you want from a resample workflow. Let's get started. All right, it is Doctor Who time. I um, I definitely have been a fan of Doctor Who, um, <clears throat> and this this uh, week's Tidy Tuesday data set has a number of different um, sort of data sets. One about you know like writers, one about directors. This one is about the episodes. And if we check out what we have here, we have um, this is uh, all from the revival you know era like. Um, uh, you know, from the from Rose, and that was uh, aired in 2005 and afterwards. We have information like um, uh, rating, um, how long it was, um, the you know the viewers, the UK viewers when it was aired, and um, and then this date, this date of when it was first aired. So let's make. I'm. I'm. So what I'm interested in here is um, how are those two things related? Like how has viewership changed over time? So let's. Um, so let's put um, that first aired uh, date on the x-axis and that UK viewers on the y-axis, and then let's just make like a line. Um, Let's make it like this. And blue, maybe, is this TARDIS blue? I don't know. Um, okay, so first of all, it looks like there are some missing values. Um, and it looks like the missing values are in this UK viewers. And if that's what I'm going to um, use as my, you know, the thing I'm going to predict, I might as well just get rid of that right now. Not is an A is an A UK viewers like that. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, yeah. Um, so this is pretty interesting in my opinion. So there on the um, y-axis is viewers in, um, if you look at the data dictionary, this is viewers in, um, uh, millions of people and then um, look how spiky it is right like um, you know this was that this is rose it goes down and it goes back up again and you know the these spikes if you look he, over here you, you kind of notice when these spikes are they tend to be um, you know season finale season um, you know, the first episodes and last episodes and seasons, um, you know, they, uh, Doctor Who does these special Christmas episodes, and those tend to be very highly, um, uh, highly watched. So we see this real, real spiky kind of, um, uh, behavior here. Also, it does look like there's kind of like a gradual, um, decline. And, you know, I, I, would say I love Doctor Who, but to be honest, I haven't caught up really on the most recent episodes. You know, I live in the U.S., and so I typically wait till they show up on streaming platforms here in the U.S., but I probably could find a way, you know, to watch them if I wanted to. And and I haven't seen these last couple um, seasons of Doctor Who. So, um, um, so yeah, we have this, this sort of behavior. So what I want to do is I want to train a model to predict the, the viewers from the date. But I, um, I want to show how using tidy models to create features for the dates um, and then how to uh, b use a workflow but be able to, um, like I said in the intro, um, to be able to do some custom handling of the workflow to get things out that I want to. Um, this is this is actually if we look at the um, like how many do I have here? This is actually a um, a very small, teeny tiny little data set. So um, that's going to limit you know what we can demo here, but uh, we can still do something. 
template. So let me load the tidy models meta package here. And then I'm not going to split this into training and testing. I'm just going to, um, let's make some bootstrap folds bootstrap folds for episodes um, <clears throat> and let's um, let's do it let's let's bump it up because we we are gonna use the bootstrap resampling to look at actually model estimates so we want more than 25 I could maybe even go up higher like to to a thousand or something like that whoops I would probably need an equal sign there and let's do stratified resampling because it pretty much never hurts us to do that and so in each of these folds you know we'd use bootstrap resampling to get a um to build a new little simulated version of this episode data set. Um, so like uh, resampling with replacement. And then these are the ones that are not in the, that did not end up in the bootstrap uh, resample. And so we can use them to, um, uh, for analysis. So this is the er, assessment. So analysis, assessment, analysis, assessment, analysis, assessment, and so forth like this. So, um, and again, super tiny data set, but that's, so, that's okay. I think we can still learn something from it. Now let's talk about uh, feature engineering. Um, so it is pretty common to want to build um, first aired, let's, let me remind myself what's in here. Um, UK viewers, first aired, which is a date, okay? So um, it is pretty common to have a date as a, as a, as you know, like a predictor, and we want to um, build features for it. So we can use in um, recipes, we have a, um, a feature engineering step that can create um, uh, features from it. So for example, if I did the default here and I said, first aired like this, it would create day of the week, month of the year, and year features. So like all the year, all the months of the year, um, all the days of the week, year. I think I'm just going to do year because this data set is so small, um, like so. And also I could say, hey, uh, also don't keep the original date column because I am instead going to use uh, this, this, you know, these features here. So I could change, keep original calls to false, but I'm not going to here because I'm going to do another um, date feature engineering thing here. And it is called step holiday like this. So it's going to convert date data into um, indicator variables that say whether a holiday is there or not. Cause I, you know, like I saw, um, you know, I know about the Doctor Who Christmas episodes and I saw how, um, you know, they looked like I saw that real spiky behavior and I thought, ah, I wonder if like the viewership, like, can I show through modeling that it is statistically more people watch um, all those, uh, those Christmas episodes. So I'm going to say sub holiday. I'm going to say, I'm going to use that first aired there. Um, I'm going to give a list of holidays. Uh, you can get them from a couple of like, there's vectors of holidays if you want. Um, I am going to use this, but I am going to, um, I'm going to take out Labor Day because that is a U.S. holiday. And then I am going to, I now I'm going to say the keep original calls equals false. And so that's going to remove this date column. So I'm going to have um, the year and I'm going to have New Year's Day and Christmas Day. Christmas Day, like this. So let's call this the Who recipe, like this. And um, I'll show you here what it looks like, like this. Whoops, like so. Okay, so I've got, so we made date features, we made holiday features. Um, and if I want, so if I want to, um, now, now it is trained here. Um, I don't need to do this part for um, the modeling that I'm going to do, but it can be helpful if you ever something goes wrong with your recipe or you want to see what does it look like. And so here I do want to show you what it's going to look like. So this is the thing I want to predict, the UK viewers. And then here is the first aired year. So this first row is rows, the, you know, that first episode of the revival. And then this is an indicator variable, 010101, as to whether that is on New Year's Day. Day, whether that was first aired on New Year's Day, and this is was it first aired on Christmas? So we can um, 
so this is this so this is our feature engineering right we started with we started with you know this which had a lot more columns that I'm not going to try to use and I took the UK viewers and the first air date and then I feature engineer until I got to this um, and this is a pretty common thing to know and a nice thing to know how to do when you have date data to be able to do that kind of feature engineering all right so now let's make a workflow um, in tidy models, we really do recommend the the uses of workflows um, because it uh, can uh, it's easier often to have your pre-processing and your um, whoops who recipe to have your pre-processing and your um, modeling in one object here this workflow object versus um, uh, you know, like different pieces you have to carry around. Um, uh, it, it often, if you like, to go to tune or um, resample a workflow objects. The, the functions that we have are built to uh, encourage good statistical practice and keep you from, um, you know, making mistakes that um, you can. It can be easy to fall into. So using workflows is great and convenient. Um, However, um, sometimes you want to do more than what the default lets you do. So first, let's look at what the default would let you do, and then let's um, do do more. So um, I nothing here needs to be tuned. So let's say well, what I, what this would look like is I'm going to have the who workflow and my folds, and um, let's call that like the who results here. And I can use um, parallel processing. Um, I don't know if there's anything random and there are not uh I'll set the C just to be sure <laughs> because obviously I have been bitten by that and so so it's going to use parallel processing it's going to fit those hundred models to those hundred resamples each one is pretty small so hopefully this doesn't take too long there it goes okay so um so what I have is metrics you know and I could I could say you know I could collect the metrics and see how well this fits I could you know make some visualizations but what if I really want to know is like hey I want to know what those coefficients are for the year for New Year's Day and Christmas Day all the models that were fit in here were all thrown away because these functions were built with the assumption that you're um you really what you really care about is measuring performance and you're gonna, you know, take that performance, choose choose something, and move on from there. So we didn't keep any of those models. Um, so so now is a time where we say, aha. Um, I need to take some more control. I need to take. Um, I need to use the flexibility that is here and um, do some more custom kind of things. So the way that you do that in um, in tidy models is through these control functions here. So let's let's talk about um, what we're going to do. So we're going to use control uh, resamples. If you wanted to uh, do fit like uh, tune grid, you might say control grid here. And um, I let's see. Uh, so let's look at it. Control resamples. Here, so I, you know, I can, ch I, I can um, set the verbosity, um, where whether we're going to save the predictions or not, whether to save the workflow, save the fitted workflow. So that's something that you might be interested in doing. Um, how how we're going to do the parallel the parallelization. The default's usually pretty good for you. What I want to do though is I want to show how to put something. Uh, custom in this extract function. So this is a function. What you want to put here is a function um, that can be used to, you know, you can retain anything you want from the model fit object or anything else that's in the workflow. Basically, it's anything that can act on the workflow. So I am going to, I'm going to put in a function called extract fit engine like that. So this is a function that um, is in tidy models. Uh, that what it does is it says, okay, go to the, um, let's look at it here, or not, um, extract fit engine. Okay, so extract in a fit engine returns the underlying engine fit. So for this, it would be like the LM fit um, here. 
um, that we're going to be able to process here. So that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this, I'm going to put this function here, but you can actually, you know, write your own function, my own function. And if it takes a workflow, um, you can put that there like that. Like you, it's very flexible. Anything that you need to do, you can put in there. I am going to call this control extract like this. And then I will say, um, control, control extract like this. And so let's rerun this. Whoops. I would be good if I'd find this. It's like, you didn't make that. Um, okay. So there it goes. So now um, it, this is going to look a little different, the results that we see here. And, um, uh, and so depending what I put here, it's going to, um, you know, take something out of the workflow and keep it for me. So what it kept for me, it, it puts it here in this dot extracts um, column here. And so let's, uh, let's, let's look at what it is. So I'm going to say select, I'm going to select the ID and that, that extracts here. So it's a tibble. Um, so let's unnest it here. So this is what I said. I said, hey, give me the, the, the engine fit, which in this case is an LM. Because in this case, I said, um, hey, let's fit this model with the year, New Year's Day, Christmas Day. Uh, using just a linear model because there's not much data here. I don't, you know, I don't think I can do anything much more than that. So, and so it gave me back the linear models like this. And so, um, uh, let me, let me tidy those. Let me tidy those now. I could have made a function up here to tidy it if, um, and like to, then I could have a tibble of coefficients here, but, um, that's not what I did. So <laughs> let's tidy it here. So I'm going to say, I'm going to use map and I'm going to map over this extracts column. So I'm going to map over extracts. And what I'm going to do uh, to all the extracts is I'm going to tidy them. So it's going to tidy them. And so now I have coefficients over here and I let me um, unnest those coefficients like this. And so now I have for each of the bootstrap resamples and the models that I have there, I have, um, the, the, um, let me make that just a little easier to read. Oh, I'm still unable to read it. So it's, this is, um, the terms are here. Let me, um, uh, let me get rid of the intercept because that is not what I'm so interested in. Okay, and so these terms are the the three, right, terms that I had, the year, um, Christmas Day, and New Year's Day. And so I, I now can, you know, I can do a ton with that. Maybe, you know, if if I wanted to really do a good job, maybe I would bump that up to, you know, to a thousand. Um, I'm not going to rerun that though. I'm just going to make a visualization here. I could do any kind of analysis I wanted here to see, because I have all of these estimates, right, for each of these. I could, um, you know, I could do any kind of um analysis I wanted to on these full, because I have these full distributions now of what these um, model coefficients are using bootstrap resampling. But let me just uh, make a quick visualization here as I end up. Uh, so I'm going to put that estimate on the x-axis. Let's make, uh, let's make the, co the color the same as that uh, term. And um, let's make little histograms. Um, and then let's facet wrap by that a term like this. Um, okay, so let's make uh, scales equals free. Let us um, say alpha equals 0.8. Um, let's make a little fewer bins, I think. I don't know. And then we don't need that legend like that. All right, so this looks pretty good. Okay, so we've got the three terms that were in this model. We had a very small sample, but we used bootstrap resampling to um, fit it, you know, a hundred times to bootstrap resample, like to bootstrap resamples of the data. And let's see what we can see here. Okay, so Christmas Day, 
uh, if it aired on Christmas Day, we see evidence here that um, it's like, uh, you know, three, two and a half or three million um, higher. The viewership is two and a half or three million higher for uh, things that are aired on Christmas Day versus not. Uh, New Year's Day, um, you know, maybe one and a half or two. So still those New Year's Day episodes also have higher viewership. And then here, this one is negative. And so that we do see here that evidence that um, we have this uh, this evidence for this like uh, modest decrease over time in viewership per um, per episode. So what what we wanted to really see here is that we we fit we, you know we made the kind of feature engineering we wanted. We um, were able to use a workflow to easily set up a model, but then we we have really the flexibility to um, get anything out of the model that we want, and then we can like ha uh, handle that how we need to later. All right, so I guess you might say that a, like a workflow is bigger on the inside, maybe, I don't know. And um, you can use those control arguments to really flexibly use any kind of function that you want that will act on those workflows that are fit for each resample and get out what you want, whether that's the, you know, the, the model, the, say, the workflow itself. Um, some, uh, you can write some custom function where maybe you want to, you know, tidy and do something to the coefficients and get it out. Uh, we did that with this example today and then combined with the feature engineering for the dates, we were able to learn something about Doctor Who episodes, like um, that the viewership is declining modestly compared to when the, um, you know, the revival started to now and that these, um, you know, these episodes like on uh, holidays like Christmas Day and New Year's Day episodes have much higher um, viewership. So I hope this was helpful and I'll see you next time.